All right, today we're going to be looking at alphas. Alpha is the ability to change geometry into a solid, semi-transparent, or void state. For today's demonstration, we have a chain link fence. Okay, now the problem with this chain link fence is there is actually white in the fence itself. So effectively, I would have to go through and highlight each section with this tool right here holding shift. Now that would take all day and I don't have time. Okay, So instead of that we're going to do it a different way. We're going to take the marquee tool and produce a box. Then I'm going to right click on it and say transform selection. I'm going to put this in the middle of all these curves Try to get it dead center in the middle. And you can zoom in. Okay. I'm using Alt and Wheel Mouse to zoom in and out. I'm going to go image, oops, first I'm going to go to the move tool and apply, and then I'm going to go image crop. All right, so now I only have one, two, three, four, five, six places to uh, wipe out. Okay, first off, select, deselect, and turn this into a square. Under image size, I'm going to choose 323 and I'm going to choose 323. Now, now it doesn't look square because I'm, I'm actually videotaping at 1024. So this is a square. It looks weird, but yeah, it is. Create a new layer. Put it underneath there. Shut off the background. And now I'm just going to eliminate all the incidences of white. Well, again, here's my magic wand tool. Hold shift. Now while I have it highlighted, I'm going to go over to channels. Hold alt and I think it's alt. It might be control. Let's hold alt. I'm going to hold Alt and click here. Nope, Control. We're going to hold Control and click here. There we go. Okay, so this is my alpha right now. Select, deselect. I want an inverse of this. Image, adjustments, invert. Okay, remember what I said. White is opaque. Black is transparent. Effectively using this channel, I'm stating that all these spaces are transparent and all the chain link is white or opaque. There we go. So I can go back. And if you want peace of mind, you can do this. It doesn't have to be because already these are transparent in Maya or any 3D application. But if you want peace of mind, you can always go through here and delete these spaces. Always tidy up your alpha. So get rid of anything that you're not using. And there we go. All right, let's save this out. We're going to save it as a targa file. I'm going to call it chain link. Make sure alpha is highlighted and hit save. It must be 32 bits. In the next section, I'm going to drag that into Maya. All right, so we can start by utilizing this texture right here in Maya 
or we can produce a tileable image here in Photoshop. Either one will work. So I'm going to show you both methods. If I just go into Maya, Okay, I'm just going to slap down a piece of geometry here, zoom in, go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Okay, I'm going to go to the Texture tab and I'm going to drag that texture in here. There it is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a material. It doesn't matter if it's a Blin or a Lambert. I'll just go Blin. Middle mouse button, click and drag this over and go to default. Okay, and then attach that to the mesh by middle mouse button, clicking and dragging. There we go. Okay, so I have this. Now, if I wanted to chain link fence, it'd be very easy to do. All I do is have to go to the chain link file, double click it, go to place texture, and I can hit repeat UV, let's say 100 times in U and V. Okay, wow, that's really dense. So 100 is probably a little strong. Let's go 20. Perfect. Okay, the other method is to simply go into Photoshop and open a new document. And let's say the new document is 1024 by 1024. We'll go back to the chain link and make this a pattern. So that would be called define pattern. Also, I would have to go to the alpha and define it as a pattern. Okay. In the new document, I could go like this, pattern. So in the layer, I could go like this. And in the channel, I would make a new channel. And go like this. Okay, so there is my, my new alpha. Now the problem with this one is it won't um, actually tile. And why that is is because when I made my new map, it was 1024. Here's a little piece of confusing for you. Um, if you're going to make this into a pattern, what you should probably do is turn it to a power of 2. So image, image size. So the power of two states, 256, 512, 1024. Um, in this case, I'm very close to uh, 256, and I'm very close to 512. So I'm going to choose 512. This will probably ruin some of the resolution on it. Okay. Now that it's in the power of two, it'll actually tile correctly. Okay, let's well let's test this out. This is a dirty trick on my part to teach you the power of two the hard way. So edit, define pattern. I'll put two after this. And two after this. Okay, let's make a new document. 
again, 1024 by 1024. And let's see if it tiles this time. Okay, here's a pattern. Here's my last two patterns. You should say two after them, correct? Okay, look at that. I have a buckle here, a buckle here, a buckle here, a buckle here. So it is tiling correctly. Okay, let's make a new channel. And there we go. So effectively, I made a tileable alpha. Let's save this out. Again, I'm going to be calling this TGA, Chainlink 2. And let's drag that into Maya. Grab a new blend, middle mouse button, click and drag it over to default. And let's attach that new material. Right click, sign existing material, blend two. Um, is there gonna be any change? No, not at all. Um, the only difference is I do not have to tile this one over and over using the repeat UV trick. So they're both the same, even though this one has blend two on it. And to find out which one I have, I could right click on these and say, select objects with material. See, there's two. There's one. One being tiled, the other one does not have to be tiled. Okay, now that we understand alphas and their creation, as far as you know, what's black, what's white, uh, in the next section, I'm just going to put a light source in here and see what happens. All right, so adding light to your scene. Well, here's the kicker. I have a transparency. What happens when light passes through it? Okay, so I'm gonna upscale this a little bit. And we got this ball. I'm going to go into rendering. I'm going to grab a spotlight. And I'm going to point it straight down. Okay, I'm going to go at rendering, high quality rendering. just like that. And now I need to change the properties of the light. So I'm gonna go into the properties by double clicking the light or going into this tab. Go into shadows and I'm gonna use ray tracing shadows. It must be ray tracing shadows. Um, the other one which is depth map shadows does not understand transparency. So ray tracing for transparency. Of course, just by turning this on doesn't mean it's gonna work. I have to go into the render settings, go to, well, sure, we'll go to ah, Maya software. Let's not overkill it. And under Maya software, we'll go into production quality. The trick here is either using Mental Ray or Maya software, you have to make sure ray tracing is involved. Close that out. Okay, let's see what happens when I render it. So I'm going to get closer to the ball here. There we go. The ball is taking on the transparency because light is passing through it onto the ball. And that's really all there is to um, passing shadows through transparent geometry. So that will be it uh, for this video. Very simple, very direct, but effective. Enjoy.